Hi, Honest Discussioner here. How's everybody doing? This is my first video ever shot on my brand new Droid 4, and oh boy is it amazing. This is my phone, and it's better than a HD web camera hooked up to my incredibly powerful PC. I'm really excited. Uh, but anyway, that's really not what this video is about. This video is about another YouTuber who goes by the name of Mr. Rebzion. I don't remember how his name is actually pronounced, so I'm gonna, if I'm butchering it, I apologize. Recently, he has converted from Christianity to Deism, and he listed some of his reasons for why that was the case. Mostly, it was based around prayer, or at least that was his uh, public reasoning. I'm sure he has a lot more nuance to his reasoning as to why he left religion for good, according to him, or completely, I should say. Now, mostly he's correct in some of his uh, criticisms of the way prayer is supposed to work. Like me, he prayed very often and, well, didn't really see any results. Uh, that happened to me before my deconversion um, from uh, Christianity to, well, briefly, I was a deist. Uh, and all I was praying for was for understanding as I read the Bible. And if God did fulfill that prayer, then he fulfilled it by, you know, making me understand that the Bible's false. Because the more I read and the more I prayed, the more convinced I was that Christianity wasn't the case. However, that's really not the point. This is more about him than it is for me. I'm just trying to let you know that I can relate to the situation. Now, the popular version of prayer, as it's understood today in modern theology, is that, you know, prayer is for intercessory needs. If you ask God for something, he will give it to you, assuming it's not outlandish. I don't think anyone's expecting God to make you in the lottery if you just happen to ask for it. But the Bible does say, ask and ye shall receive. And I'm pretty sure that should be interpreted in such a way that if you honestly need something, God will give it to you. Now, when you are newly deconverted from Christianity, there might be some people that will pounce upon you and attempt to get you to come back, because that's when you're usually at your weakest. You're emotionally distraught, everything is new to you, and hearing a radical new interpretation on something that you haven't considered might actually sway you, and then later back and forth. It's what I went through. It's why it took me years to convert from Christianity to deism, and then and eventually to atheism, uh, where I've been for a very long time. So I'd like to give a play a devil's advocate sort of situation for Mr. Reb Zion, so he, he might actually understand what might be coming his way, if it ever actually does. Now, I understand this might be presumptuous of me. He might already know this, he might have already encountered it, he might have a million and one reasons why it's wrong. Maybe even more eloquent than I'm about to display it. But uh, in case that's not the case, I would like to go over this and put that out there, and even if he doesn't have any use for it, maybe someone else will. So here we go. I think a different apologist might approach someone and try to make them feel guilty by basically make, leading them to the conclusion that if they want anything for themselves, if they have any desires whatsoever, it's basically a bad thing. They won't come out and say it, of course, but they'll lead you to try to attempt to lead you to that conclusion. This is by trying to interpret prayer as not something for you to talk to God and try to work things out in your life uh, and try to reach your own goals, but for God to tell you what to do, for God to tell uh, you and lead you as to what his plan is for you. So any sort of prayer that is asking for something is completely, you know, not what you're supposed to be doing. You're just supposed to be saying, God, what do you want me to do? And God will tell you. This is a little bit different from how most people see prayer, but it is, there are verses in the Bible that you could uh, quote to try to justify this position. I'm pretty sure there's a good number of uh, denominations out there that actually support this proposition. So if that's actually true, that would sort of put Mr. Rip Zion out of what his original criticism was. Again, maybe he has something for this as well, but just in case, let's go over what the problems are with this. Problems are that it's basically trying to make sure that whatever happens, all of the good stuff automatically gets blamed on God, or the credit goes to God, and anything that bad that happens, the blame goes to you, the person that's praying. 
let's run through how this would work. If we're going to assume that this is the type of prayer that is, uh, you know, mandated in the Bible and that's what you're supposed to do, if you have a problem in your life, you're supposed to pray about it. And when you're praying, you're, if there isn't a God, what you're actually doing is just linking to your subconscious mind, which actually is pretty good at problem solving. Now, if you come up with a solution and it works, great. This means that God helped you out and told you what to do. You did it and it worked out. This was part of his plan. If it done if it doesn't work out though well that means you did something wrong you misunderstood him and you're really not following and you're really not opening yourself up enough it is your fault so keep praying more and eventually once something does go right and something's bound to go right evidence for god and prayer works this is a very negative type of uh, belief to hold in my opinion. It's something that can really just take away all of your self-worth and put it onto another entity that, in my opinion, doesn't really exist, or at least there's no evidence for. So in that vein, I'd like to warn people against this type of thing. And in case you know you don't have anything to say against it other than that, someone might say, yes, God is responsible for everything and you're a terrible person because you're filled with sin. This is actually something that can be tested, despite how they've tried very hard to make sure it's unfalsifiable. If you were to honestly and openly, for an entire month, maybe a couple months, pray to Jesus Christ for guidance and say, whatever you want me to do, whatever you comes to me, I just want you and only you to tell me what's going on and what I should do. When this happens, try it out for a month or two, and record how things went. Then, pray to a different god. Pray to Vishnu or Buddha or an inanimate object. Pray to your cell phone or your smartphone. I almost feel like doing that sometimes. See if there was any difference. And then ask the person who's trying to advocate this form of prayer if you think that there would actually be a difference. They're either going to say one of two things. They're going to say, uh, well, you know, that's really not fair. Uh, I don't really know how that would work out. You just have to have faith in God. Or they'll say, uh, you know, certainly go ahead and try it. If they say that, well, you have to actually go ahead and try it or put up or shut up. But if they do the former one and they say, you know what? If you do anything to t test God, if you try to question him in any way, that shows a lack of faith. And you just need to believe it no matter what happens. Then you know that truly... They have absolutely nothing to offer you. That's about it. I do this a little bit more eloquently in my blog post, link below, so check that out. Uh, not as much rambling and off the hipness on there. I can actually write out things. Please subscribe to my blog as well. Just put your email in there so that I don't have to tell you in video format. And also like my Facebook page down in the underbar. That's it. Have a nice day. Honest Discussioner, out.